All right, NFL playoffs. Divisional round kicks off Saturday and Sunday. Once again, we got four games this weekend. It was nice having so many games last weekend, six games on that schedule. The home team in the divisional round of the playoff owns a 22-6 and straight-up record over the last seven years. And if you want to go more recent, over the past three years, the home teams are 10-2 and straight up in the divisional round playoff games. The LA Rams on the road kick things off in Green Bay. The Rams are six and a half point road underdogs. This game features the number one scoring offense, Green Bay versus number one ranked scoring defense in the LA Rams. This is the fourth playoff matchup in the past 50 years between the NFL's passing TD leader and the defense that allowed the fewest passing TDs that season. The passing TD leader has won the previous three such games. So will that change this weekend? Well, let's move on and see. Green Bay was 7-1 straight up and 5-3 against spread at home this year. The Packers are 6-4 straight up and 7-3, 7-3 against spread their last 10 versus LA. Green Bay is 6-0 against the spread their last 6 versus the Rams. The favorite is 9-1 against spread their last 10 meetings. The road team is 5-2 against spread in their last 7 matchups. Green Bay is 5-0 straight up their last 5 at home. The Packers are 7-2 against spread their last 9 games in January. The, the over is 5-0 in Green Bay's last 5 playoff games. The last 7 games, the last 7 Packers games in January have all went over the total. Green Bay is 19-5 straight up at home in the playoffs in their franchise history. The Packers have allowed fewer than 17 points in four of their last five games. The Rams were 5-4 straight up and against spread on the road this year. LA 6-3 against spread their last nine games overall. Four of the last five Ram games have gone under the total. The total has gone under the number in 11 of LA's last 14 games. Five of the last six meetings in Green Bay have gone under the number between these two teams. The Rams are 5-1 straight up their last six games versus NFC North opponents. The Rams are 13-6 against spread their last 19 games on the road. The over is 5-0 in the Rams' last five divisional playoff games. Per PFF, Amari Cooper is the only player with 50-plus receiving yards while being guarded by Jalen Ramsey in a game this season, including the playoffs, and that was in Week 1. And Ramsey, why do I mention that? Because he'll most likely be shadowing Devontae Adams for the most part in this game, and will that be enough to force Aaron Rodgers to look elsewhere? And can the likes of Veldis Scantling and the other receivers get the job done for Green Bay? This is the first game since 2011's AFC Championship game to feature a player with more receiving TDs on the season than the opposing team has allowed all year. I believe the Rams have only allowed 15 passing TDs or something like that on the season. And Devontae Adams, I believe he has 18 receiving TDs on the year. So quite the stat right there. Um... How healthy are Aaron Donald and Cooper Cup? That's another issue this week. They both got injured against Seahawks last week. What was it? Uh, Donald uh, with the ribs and Cup with the knee. I ex Donald's uh, going to play for sure. Cup, I believe he will play, but keep your eye out for that as well. Rodgers led the NFL with 48 TD, 70.7 per completion rate, a 121.5 passer rating, and threw, well, Tied for a league low five interceptions on the year. Aaron Rodgers is 108 and 73 against spread since 2009. Adams became the first player in NFL history to have at least 100 receptions. He had 115, 18 receiving TDs in a season, and Adams did that in 14 games. Green Bay is down two offensive linemen facing a Rams front four that is deadly, even with a beat up Donald on the front four. This is a defense that is serious. Uh, Cam Akers versus the Packers, suspect run defense. That's another thing to watch. Do the Rams have a healthy QB? Jared Goff is getting the start. Wolford's out. He got hurt in uh, the game against Seattle last week. He hurt his neck and he is definitely not playing this week. The Rams D held Seattle to 142 yards through the air in last week's wildcard game. LA sacked opposing QBs 53 times this year, second in the NFL. 
and yet they didn't send a lot of blitzes. They relied on their front four to get all the pressure and generate those sacks pretty much on their own for the most part this season. And that's going to be a huge key factor in this game because I believe in playoffs, the offensive and defensive lines win games. And that's why I'm hesitating and I'm a little, little hesitant on this game because as much as I want to pick the Packers and Aaron Rodgers and see Rodgers win a Super Bowl, if the Eagles aren't going to win, because I do love watching him play QB. I'm not big on Green Bay, but I do enjoy Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams. How can you not if you're a football fan? But the, this line battle up front is going to be huge for me, especially with the Packers being down those 2-0 linemen. Um, Akers, he had 131 rushing yards versus Seattle last week, the most ever by a player 21 or younger in a playoff game. Akers also became the first rookie in postseason history to record 100-plus rushing yards and 40-plus receiving yards in a game. It's supposed to be windy in mid-20s at game time. And another little fun fact here, LaFleur and Mc McVay, they coached together in Washington from 2010 to 2013, and LaFleur was the offensive coordinator for McVay in 2017. The Rams are the only current NFC team with an all-time winning record versus the Packers, 46-45-2. I love the Rams to cover this spread. I think Aaron Rodgers, he's just too good not to win this game somehow. I, I just... That offensive-defensive line matchup scares me, and I, I think the Rams could pull off an upset here. I'm just going to call them to cover the spread and Green Bay, but I might lay a couple bucks on the Rams to win on the money line as well. Moving on, Baltimore, two-and-a-half-point road dogs in Buffalo to face the Bills. Baltimore went 7-2 straight up and 6-2-1 and against spread on the road this year. The Ravens are 6-3 and three straight up and against spread their last nine versus Buffalo. Four of the last five meetings of Buffalo have gone under the total. The home team is 6-2 and two against spread their last eight meetings. The under is 7-2 and two their last nine meetings. I believe they've only met nine times overall. Baltimore is 7-0 against spread their last seven overall. The Ravens are 4-1 and one straight up their last five versus the Bills. Baltimore's 13-2 straight up their last 15 road games. The Ravens are 6-1 straight up their last seven games against the AFC East. Baltimore is 5-0 against spread following a straight up win and their last five games as an underdog. They're 5-0 against spread as well. The Ravens are 6-0 against spread following an against spread win. The Ravens are 5-1 against spread their last six road games. Baltimore has won six straight overall. The Ravens are the only team in NFL history with a winning record on the road in the postseason, and that record is 11-6. Buffalo has won seven straight, five straight at home, will go on four and one against the spread in their last five. In that span at home, that five-game span at home, sorry. The Bills went eight and one straight up and six and three against spread at home this year. Buffalo is eight and one against spread in their last nine overall. The total's gone under in 12 of the Bills' last 17 games. The over is 11-2-1 in Bills' last 14 games following a straight-up win. Buffalo is 7-0, straight up their last seven overall. Their first seven-game win streak since 1990, and that includes the playoffs. The Bills are 5-12 against spread their last 17 games in January. The Bills are 25-37 against spread in their last 62 home games versus a team with a winning record. Buffalo is 11-3 straight up in home playoff games in franchise history. This is the 10th time that two teams on 6-plus game win streaks will meet in the playoffs, not including the Super Bowl game. The home team has won 8 of the previous 9 such games. Baltimore allowed only 2... Sorry, start over. Baltimore allowed only two 100-yard receivers all season. That's the fewest in the NFL this year. Josh Allen is 5-0 versus top 10 total defenses this season. Rams, Chargers, Niners, Pittsburgh, Colts. John Harbaugh has eight career playoff wins on the road, most all-time by a coach. Lamar Jackson became the first QB in NFL history to rush for over 1,000 yards in back-to-back -back seasons. Neither QB played well in Baltimore's 24-17 win over the Bills last season. Neither Josh Allen or Lamar Jackson really had big days. That was more a defensive battle and a running game. And Buffalo's running game hasn't been that existent lately. That scares me a little bit here. The Bills have struggled to cover tight ends all year as well. Uh, Lamar DeMarca Andrews may be a big theme in that game. 40% uh, chance of snow at game time. I don't think snow or weather is going to be an issue for either of these two teams. 
I think Lamar Jackson has turned a corner. Do I think they're going to the Super Bowl? I don't know. But I do think they are the better team in this matchup, even though Buffalo is the hot choice or the popular choice right now because of how they've been lighting it up offensively and whatnot. The way Baltimore was able to shut down Derrick Henry last week, I like Baltimore to win and cover the spread and face off against. We'll see later who I pick. Cleveland on the road, 10-point underdogs at Kansas City to face the Chiefs. Cleveland was 6-3 and three straight up and 4-5 and five against spread on the road this year. The Browns are 4-8 and eight against spread in their last 12 games overall. Cleveland 7-2 and two straight up their last 9 overall. The Browns are 5-2 and two against spread their last 7 versus Kansas City. Cleveland's 5-1 and one straight up their last 6 on the road. The Browns are 2-5 and five straight up their last 7 in Kansas City. Cleveland's 1-5 and five against spread their last 6 versus the AFC West. The Browns are 4-11 and 11 against spread their last 15 games on the road. Kansas City was 6-2 and two straight up and 3-5 and five against spread at home this year. The Chiefs are 6-3 and three straight up and 4-5 and five against spread their last 9 versus the Browns. The total has gone over in 6 of the 9 meetings. The road team's 5-1 against spread in their last 6 matchups. The underdog is 5-2 and two against spread their last 7. The Browns are 5-2 and two against this, this spread their last 7 meetings as well. Kansas City is 0-7-1 against spread their last 8 games. The Chiefs are 10-1 straight up their last 11 overall. Kansas City's 13-2 straight up and 10-5 against spread their last 15 games at home. The Browns' run game is led by one of the NFL's best offensive lines, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt in the backfield behind that offensive line. And not only are they good runners, but both of them are incredible receivers out of the backfield as well. They're both dual threat running backs with a great offensive line to lead the way for them. And that could spell a dangerous matchup for Kansas City in this game. Patrick Mahomes, he is 41 and nine straight up and 29 and 19 against spread. Mahomes has accounted for 16 total TDs in his first five postseason games, 13 of those passing, three of those rushing. The most TDs any one player has been responsible through five career postseason games ever. Andy Reid is 7-4 against spread off a bye as Kansas City's head coach and 25-5 in his career after a bye, and that includes playoffs. Andy Reid has won all seven games he has coached against the Browns so far in his career. QBs drafted first overall are 1-5 straight up against Andy Reid in the playoffs. Travis Kelsey caught 105 passes for 1,416 yards and 11 TDs this season. Is that the best season ever by a tight end? I don't know. It's definitely got to be right up there. I haven't really thought about it or gone through all the great tight end games. But man, uh, just a hell of a year for uh, Travis Kelsey. Cleveland has only won multiple games in a single postseason once in franchise history, and that was 1950. Long time, Browns, long time. The Browns haven't lost a game by more than 10 points since week six, while Kansas City hasn't won a game by more than 10 points since week eight. Spread a little off in my opinion on this game, but I understand it. They got to put the lines because a lot of the public money will come in on Kansas City no matter what the number is. And Browns fans and maybe some of the sharp money might come in on Cleveland with the number being double digits. Especially with them stats I just read there. Cleveland had the easiest schedule when it comes to opposing offenses. And the Browns still finished 25th in both DVOA pass defense and total DVOA. With that soft a schedule, with such weak offenses facing off against your defense every week, and now you got to go against Patrick Mahomes, maybe there is justification in why this spread is what it is. Kansas City scores an average of four points, of four more points per game than Cleveland, and Kansas City gives up an average of four less points per game than Cleveland on the year. I like Kansas City to win this game, but the way they've played, the way they have, have failed to cover spreads lately, I just don't know that I can support them on the road. But if Kansas City gets out to the early lead, I think it's going to force Cleveland into passing, which will negate some of what Chubb and Hunt can do and force Baker Mayfield into making some maybe erratic decisions and maybe not playing so smoothly. I've been torn on the spread on which way to go all week. I can't make up my mind. I still can't make up my mind. I know Kansas City is going to win, in my opinion. I think that's a lot. I just 
just don't know whether it's by three points, by six points, by 14 points. I can't make up my mind. Big number. I'm going to take Cleveland on the points uh, against spread and Kansas City to win this game. It's probably going to fall pretty close to that 10 points because Cleveland does have a lot of uh, offensive firepower. Tampa Bay at New Orleans. The Saints, their three-point home favorite. You have the oldest and the second oldest QBs to start in a playoff game, playing each other. So obviously, that gives you the oldest QB, age QB combination, however the fuck you word it, in NFL history, regular season or playoffs. What are they, 41 and 43 or whatever it is, so 84 total age. That's absolutely phenomenal. And the divisional round of playoffs, it's not like they snuck in as wild card teams or anything like that. This will be the 59th meeting between these two franchises, but the first postseason matchup. The Bucks went 7-2 straight up and 4-5 against Sprint on the road this year. Tampa has won 5 straight overall and 6 straight on the road. Four of the last five meetings in New Orleans have gone over the total. The Saints have won 5 straight games versus Tampa. The total has gone over in 15 of Tampa's last 20 games versus the NFC. The over is 10 and 1 in Tampa's last 11 versus the NFC South. The Bucks are 0 and 5 straight up and against spread their last five versus the Saints. The favorite is 4 and 1 against spread their last five meetings. Tampa is 1 and 4 straight up and against spread their last five games in New Orleans. The over is 4 and 1 their last five meetings in New Orleans. The over is 5 and 2 their last seven meetings overall. The Saints are 7-3 straight up and against spread their last 10 versus the Bucks. New Orleans went 7-2 straight up and 5-3-1 and against spread at home this season. The Saints are 8-1-1 one and one against spread their last 10 overall. New Orleans is 7-1 and one against spread their last 8 versus the NFC. The under is 4-0 and in Saints last 4 versus the AFC South. NFC South, sorry. Um, the under is 4-0 and in New Orleans last 4 playoff games. The under is 5-0 in the Saints' last five games in January. The under is 4-0 in the Saints' last four playoff games as a favorite. The Saints won both meetings this year, picking up Brady twice in the first game, three times in the second game, while Breeze tossed six TDs and no picks in those two games. Breeze is 5-2 versus Brady in his career straight up, including the playoffs. Brady had a passer rating under 80 three times this year, Two of those three times were when they played the New Orleans Saints. Like teams who swept the regular season series, as the Saints did, winning both games against Tampa this year, are 17-7 and straight up at home in the playoffs in that third game all time. Tampa's secondary could be an issue as they struggled to contain Taylor Heineke. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. I apologize if I'm not. And they couldn't cover Cam Sims. They could be in big trouble versus Michael Thomas and Manuel Sanders and company. Um, the Bucks own the league's best run defense. So containing Kamara's run game should be a huge, huge thing. In eight career games versus the Bucks, Kamara has never rushed for more than 75 yards. But he has scored nine total TDs, six rushing, three receiving in those eight games. And accumulated at least 100 scrimmage yards in five of those eight games. Tampa allowed the fewest rushing yards per game and the fewest rushing TDs this year. New Orleans had the six most rushing yards per game and the most rushing TDs on the season. I like the Saints to win this game. I like the Saints to cover the spread. If it creeps up to four, I'd be flipping it because I think the Saints win this by like three to six points, something like that, three to seven range. And uh, go ahead and move on to the conference finals. Anyways, Dagswag will be coming back in two more weeks. I'm just looking for a place to shoot the videos and get it out there to you. And I'll be back up shortly. Peace.